Hey. Good morning, Brother Chitta is in the house. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. He's getting his position. Hey. <laughs> nice position. Can you close those curtains, Chitta? Yes. Uh, cover, cover them or something? Yes. Anybody else need to check your lighting or whatever? Anybody got a green screen so all of a sudden you're in San Francisco? What? <laughs> All right, the other person whose name is there but is not on camera is one of my students here in Boulder, Ellen Brown, who's not only just started her journey, has a couple of my books. She's about to start a Zen cleanse. Nice. So people are finding out, well, what is it like to really get your body back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So where are you located, Katie? I am in Arkansas, in the middle okay. of the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yes. We thought Colorado was in the middle of the U.S. Okay. <laughs> oh no 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 Buffalo River that's that's the middle. <laughs> I don't know why. I just <laughs> we, we found out how central it is. So before we get started, something we always do just to remind people of a little bit of agreements on the conference calls. Number one, if you want to say something, press the icon for the raise the hand or raise your hand. Number two. If you got to eat something, turn off your camera or walk away from the camera. Number three, I know some of you guys have a lot of high energy. No yoga on camera, please. <laughs> we had on one of the early calls, we had Rico Mesa. Uh, you might remember him. Uh, he just loves exercising. He's doing handstands, headstands, all manner of exercises. I said, that's really cool, but not on the call, please. <laughs> so. Everybody understand all those little bit of agreements? <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Um, did you bring any any refreshments? Well, that that would be. <laughs> this is what it P right here. So P is acceptable, but no food. Uh, whatever. We're not, well, you're chewing with your <laughs> with your with your mouth. <laughs> so if you don't have any, just grab something that will be symbolic of holding your golden water so we can do a prayer. Some people just symbolically do something or have the mm -hmm. All right, here goes. You guys familiar with call and response? Are you kirtan people? Oh yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Grab your water. Here's how the prayer goes. I say something, you repeat it, and here we go. I take this water of life. I take this, I take water, this of water, of life. water of life. Water of life. You guys are good. All right. I declare it the water of light. I declare, I declare it the water, water, of, water of, light. of light. As I bring this water within this body. As I bring this water within this body. As I bring this water within this body. It allows me to glow. It allows, it allows me, to glow. me to glow. That's why your aura looks so bright today. Uh, <laughs> I take this water of light. I take this, I take water, this water of light. I declare it the water of God. I declare, I declare the water, water of God. God. I am the master of all I do and all that I am. I'm the master, I'm the master of, of all that I do and all that I am. That I am. To your health. <laughs> okay, so who's got time to hang around for an hour? Or how long can you guys hang around? I'm good today. I know I haven't had time much recently, but I'm good today. Well, good. I'm going to ask everybody some questions, and you're welcome to answer them or pass. Now, Katie, you, you lifted your hand just a minute ago. Was, were you testing? I was testing because I, I said something, and I thought, oh, I should raise my hand. And so I <laughs> tested that out. Yeah. Okay. Here's the questions. Everybody, how do you practice UT? What do you do every day? Is it mostly oral? Is it topicals? Is it mixed? Who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll start. Uh, Eighty or second. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of uh, an enema in the morning, um, fresh mixed with some age if I have it. Um, I've heard Amanda Vollmer call any kind of enema in the morning um, basti. It's a Ayurvedic word for it. 
And just like I enjoy tongue scraping and brushing my teeth in the morning, you know, I just find that uh, that's a good time to just flush. And then I can stay later or, you know, uh, eat later. I don't get as hungry as quickly because hunger is like just wanting to calm down the detox symptoms, <laughs> obviously now. So uh, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And then, you know, just drink it fresh. You know, probably the most powerful and lovely practice is high dose looping fresh which is, you know, it's harder than it sounds for it being a basic pro protocol, you know, just really high dose of looping. I don't do it a lot, you know, it's, it's profound. You know, I, I drink fresh all the time, but I mean, like, you know, try to drink as much of that fresh as possible. That's uh, that's a challenge. Oh yeah. Here comes Ben Johnson. Thank you, Chitta. Um, Katie, here's a question. Here's a question back to you. Hello, Ben. How do you practice urine therapy, UT and and uh, what kind of, uh, what do you do every day, orally and topically? So orally, I drink my morning urine, which for me is a good half of a gallon. So I make that kind of last throughout the whole day because <laughs> so, I pee a lot. So um, then I also enjoy collecting it and aging it. And so then I put aged daily on my face. Um, I'm working on the habit of working on my eyes with my eye cup every morning. And I, um, I love to take bath with my aged urine anywhere from that day to, you know, a couple of weeks old. Um, so I do that like daily. I soak in the tub for a good 30 minutes with my aged and I love putting it on my belly button, the aged on my belly button. So I put the aged on my face. I'll put aged like every day. And then I like to put it on my belly button in the morning is nice. Um, I tend to do an enema in the evening. So that's that's been what I tend to do. I think that covers it. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Let's say let's go over to Darlene. The question is, what are your UT practices like on a daily basis? How much do you drink? And just anything you want to share about your uh, your personal uh, practices with UT. Okay, first morning urine is important for me. I put it in my eyes, up my nose. Um, I drink it, I swish with it, and then I do the tongue scraping after I've swished and, and that. Um, it seems to bring up more from the tongue once you've had it in the mouth for a while and then drank it a bit. And then I drink as much as I want of that first morning urine, um, and then the rest I kind of bathe with it. Um, and then I used aged on my skin. Um, I mix that with my own oils and that, and so I mix the age with that and put that on my skin for the day. You know, my body, you know, I put it on my legs, I put it, I put it all over, uh, mixed with different oils, um, depending on what I need for that day. And um, doing my skin. Uh, I used to do a lot of Bosties. I don't do as many anymore. Um, they have, you know, they're very strong and have a very strong detoxing effect. So when I feel I need them, I do them. And when I don't, then I don't. And I usually do that with the aged also. Um, sometimes I do foot baths, um, you know, all depends what is needed. Um, you know, sometimes I find the ends of my hair dry, then I'll put it on the ends of my hair, but you know, that's my practice. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, You're welcome. Let's go. Jose, Jose, welcome to the call. Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm late. Nice to see everybody. That's okay. Another member of the uh, a Golden Pyramid Hat Company. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, Jose, what we're doing right now is we're I'm asking everybody, we did the communion to start off with. He's He's covered. Way to go, bro. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. So we're asking everybody, what are your practices like? What do you do every day? Are you just doing oral? Are you doing topical? Uh, what kind of things are you regular with? And Jose, if you want to share that with uh, the group, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so every day, my daily practice is I get my fresh catch of the day of the morning. Um, I typically, uh, I'll drink most of that, but I'll also, as I'm as I have it in my glass, I'm usually standing in the mirror, staring at myself, uh, reciting some affirmations that I have. So I speak in, into my waters uh, and then I watch myself as I drink my own waters. 
Um, I'll actually uh, wash my face with it a little bit, kind of prep some things then eventually take a shower. Um, throughout the day uh, at work, I have a glass or it's more of a coffee mug that I use. Um, but I, I, I pee in that and I, I drink it throughout the day at work. Um, I'll have about probably a total of maybe four to six cups a day of my own urine. Um, and then usually at night I do, um, I splash, you know, uh, wash my face with it and let it air dry uh, as I sleep. Um, on occasion, usually every other month or so, I'll drink my aged urine. Um, and I'll, I'll, it's usually during when I'm going like deep in my inner work and whatnot. Um, but uh, that's about it, really. I haven't, I haven't dabbled in the other protocols like the enemas or I've done the eye drops before. Uh, that's very powerful, but that's about it. Okay, well, um, for those, for those people who have uh, picked up some good urine therapy books these days, you'll find out there's 25 protocols. And every time I start talking about the protocols, someone in this community comes up with a new one. So I've kind of lost count after 25, but uh, the newest ones was the navel soak because there's 72,000 nerve endings that come out of that leftover piece called the pachati. And if you just simply put a cotton ball, soak cotton ball in your belly button, or just drop it in and lay on your back, that's, those nutrients will start being absorbed in the bloodstream through the navel. And so that's a one way to get it into your core area. Um, ben, Ben, welcome back. Been a while. Oh, thanks. Um, we're, everybody's given an opportunity before we go into other questions on the call, uh, just to tell us what are your daily practices like? Are you just doing oral consumption, topical uh, use, a mix, or what is it like for you? I usually do. Um, I usually have about a quart, a quart and a half from during the night, and I'll, I'll drink that in the morning, and then throughout the day, I loop some, and then I do animus probably a couple times a week when I get a chance, and um, I've done some topical, but um, my other family members complain about the smell in the house, so um, I'm trying to figure out a solution to do foot soaks and stuff, but um, I've got a conjunctivitis that has been bugging me for a couple of weeks. Um, I don't know if you have any suggestions for that. Um, I'd be interested to hear if anybody else has had good success, but um, I did some swim goggles with fresh in it, but um, I don't know, it seemed to make it a little more irritated, but I'm thinking about maybe doing some drops of fresh or something. But... Okay, well, I'd like to toss that over to Darlene. She looks like uh, she wants to speak up and <laughs> yeah of, of course and maybe katie has some ideas too um but you know it all depends on your own personal urine so some urines have a little bit higher bacterial level than others so you know depending on how clean your diet is and that it may or may not work for you for your eyes but definitely a lot of people put it in their eyes i put in my eyes daily um and it keeps my eyes nice and clean and clear um and, and especially in my sinus passages and that it keeps that all clear um, so you could try a couple drops of the fresh, um, you know, cons I would do it like three or four times a day. Um, mm -hmm. And then if in a day or two, if that doesn't work, then you could use something like colloidal silver or something like that. Oh. You know, you want to see a progress, you want to see it progressing. If it, pro if it keeps progressing and it's clearing up, then yes, keep, keep on doing it, get it cleared up. If it doesn't, then you want to um, come in with something else. Did you have any mm -hmm. other suggestions, Katie? Um, well, my only other suggestion would be um, that Dr. Christopher has an eye wash that um, it's got a little bit of cayenne in there, but that helps to increase the circulation, which will help to um, you know facilitate healing. You just got to be careful with how much you use of that, but that's what it's for. And uh, I've used that before and it's been, been great. So that's, that would be my only suggestion added on to that. Yeah, of course, any salt water that you want to put, you know what I mean? Um, you can rinse, rinse your eye out with salt water also mm -hmm. um, regularly, multiple times a day, which would be like a saline solution. But mm -hmm. um, I just, I like making my own rather than getting the bottled stuff from the drugstore. Just, it's just salt mm -hmm. and water. So if you've got a good quality sea salt or something, it's just salt and water. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I've been eating um, vegan like a 
anti-inflammatory diet for the last month. So it's no, no grains, Good. Um, no legumes, just mm -hmm. like a lot of sweet potato and squash and salads and vegetables, some okay. nuts. And then you also want to look at what energetically is going on in your body. You know, um, you know, what are you not wanting to see? <laughs> you know, in your life? Yeah. <laughs> Also, you want to be nourishing and cleaning your liver. Yeah, I, I got this uh, amazing liver and gallbladder cleanse. I'm going to do that in the next few days. Great. So it could just be some old toxins just coming out because you've been cleansing a lot. Mm -hmm. So, but you want to you want to keep it from getting too infected. That's like you don't want to cause yeah. any proper damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a culture. It was supposedly microsporidia, which is pretty unusual and hard to treat. So. Have you done an Orin fast before? <laughs> I've done up to three days. Um, I could probably do longer, but I was just getting kind of weak and I was trying to do a lot of work in the garden and stuff at the same time. So, yeah. You Definitely think that would be helpful in cleaner, clearing it up? Or? Mm -hmm. Work at your own pace because sometimes a three day Orin fast can be really strong. Um, mm -hmm. Some people sail through it and some people have massive detox reactions. So do it at your own pace of what you feel is right for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Katie? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Dream it. <laughs> Usually I don't get that hungry. I just get really tired, lethargic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found that after I did the three day fast, I found the two days after were the hardest. Once I started eating again, um, I had like massive uh, detox reactions that after it. Um, which was kind of funny, but while I was doing it, I felt great. Thank you. And I also recommend you get body work, massage, reflexology to not only help to move those toxins out of those areas, but also to nurture precious Ben who needs oh. to be <laughs> held and taken care of. So you got to right. do some self-care along with just doing the protocols. Mm-hmm. Right. I always explain like the energetic and the physical are kind of like on a balance beam. And when one is off, the other is off. So you need to balance them both out. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Um, here's a question for you guys. What advice? It's a two part question. Anybody can grab this one. What advice would you give to newbies who are sitting on the fence about starting UT number one and number two? Uh, what advice would you give to newbies who have just started and are unsure what to do with UT and what they need to change in their lifestyle to achieve wellness results? I would like to start again. Chita? Research the terrain model of disease. And that is in direct opposition to germ theory. And that will change your perspective on everything, which is you know, something that you should kind of try to do when working with urine because urine is so profound. Like it, it will impact every area of your life. So any area of your life that you can improve will facilitate the urine practice. And then in terms of the paradigm shift that's required for all that, in my understanding, is really the terrain theory versus the germ model. And, and people think they can kind of coexist. Not my understanding of it at all. Uh, one is true and one is entirely false. <laughs> so enjoy, enjoy researching. Yeah. So what kind of advice are you going to give to the newbies? They're sitting on the fence. They're not sure whether to take the first drink. They're not sure if you're a nutcase, uh, but your, your argument is solid and they're curious, but they haven't quite, you know, jumped in the water yet. Oh, you take your finger, stick it in. Are you, are you asking me to, to actually answer your question or are we moving yes, on to somebody else? Ask oh, okay. Take your <laughs> take your finger stick it in there and, and just look at it and, and notice that it's not dissolving your finger <laughs> and then wait a day sleep on it let that experience you know like you know get into your subconscious and then you know like one drop on the tongue and just just baby steps you know consistency i like going first because i like saying the best advice and then everybody else has to freaking uh, figure out what to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bump, bump just go slow bump. just go super slow don't stop <laughs> Just go super slow. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Jump on in. I, I, when I got started, I started putting it in like a shot glass or a wine glass, and then that way I basically just had it on my counter, and I would just walk by and take a sip, and uh, 
that helped me. I didn't feel like I was chugging it. Um, I was able to just take a test, taste, and it was in something that was enjoyable. So it had that good, you know, has those memories. So it was fun. And uh, I did that. And then I also suggest um, soak your feet in it, feel the energy because our feet, when we soak our feet in it, I think that that's, for me, I started with soaking my feet. And I started um, with the little cup on the counter. And, uh, and then I ended up working up to bigger cups and bigger cups. And now it's in a great big thing. And, <laughs> and I'll drink that up. So that would be my suggestion so that they can start to get familiar with it, get familiar with the smell, get familiar with the fact that it has so much energy that you can feel in your feet. Yeah. Thank you. I would suggest you give them reading material, tell them your <laughs> personal testimonial, your personal experience, give them third party in case they have a history with you and they might have a judgment on you. It's oftentimes a good idea to give them third party testimonial. I heard about this guy out in Kansas who was drinking it and he got such great results. I'm in. Uh, another thing that some people find helpful, I think we did this with Tara over at the retreat, is both of you and this newbie hold your glass and take a drink at the same time. It's like you're holding their hand. And since this is an intuitive medicine, you guys are going to come up with new ideas that we haven't even discussed here. Yeah, just uh, I would say just smelling it at first, um, because there's a lot in just the smell, um, because I believe when you smell it on a daily basis, mm. um, your body says what's working for you and what's not working for you for what you're what you're consuming other than the urine. So even if you just smell it, you'll develop um you know uh so, you know not wanting to eat anything that doesn't you know what i mean uh agree with you so just smelling the urine in general um goes so far um because mm -hmm. the fresh shouldn't smell strongly you know so if there's some strong smells of the fresh there's something that you're consuming that is not working with your um bio individuality so you need to just you know just smell it <laughs> that's my Two cents. Yeah. Uh, I was actually going to say the same thing, you know, kind of, kind of following what the, the brother was saying too. Uh, that I did that. I, I smelled it for like a week straight, just every morning, pee in the cup and smell it. And that was it. And then a couple of days later, I eventually started touching it, like I was saying, and tried a little, little bit. And then I just jumped right into it. Um, so I, I totally agree. And uh, what you were saying, Brother Sage, too, about it being intuitive, that's kind of the advice I would give for somebody who's already doing it is just, understanding that it's intuitive and, and knowing that everyone's journey is different and what works for somebody may not work for you, vice versa. And just to try it, if, if it feels right, do it, you know, so. This is your body taking uh, all of the perfect nutrients from the plasma, cleaning it up, filtering it out and making the perfect solution combination of medicine for you. And what it is, I think Katie might have brought this up. This is you loving you. Mm -hmm. This is you returning the essence of you back to you. Now, if you want to go all Hindu on us, Chitta, if we want to go all Hindu on you and say it's Shiva water, it's the blood of the Lord, it's the water of Shiva, great. It's whatever association or connection you can make because we need to have a pathway of understanding. So people go, this makes totally sense to me. I spent mm -hmm. nine months in mom's belly drinking this, peeing it snorting it it makes sense to me it's not a foreign idea like a lot of people used to think it is mm -hmm. yeah the aged urine has a crystal like um energy that comes off of it so if you feel your your aged urine there's a crystal like energy and so um it's your own chris liquid crystal that you're consuming so if you want to activate the crystals in your body and that it's your own liquid crystal for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you Anybody else want to add to that? They call it the water of life. Are you still talking about um, starting out? Well, yeah, we can keep going because newbies uh, need to know what we know. And um, um, go ahead. Oh, I think probably one of the easiest ways to start is, you know, if people are, are grossed out by thinking the thought of drinking it or something is 
if in my experience, it's really helpful with dry skin. So if you have like really dry skin, you could just put fresh on dry skin. I recommend that and then wash it off after an hour. And, you know, that kind of gets people mm -hmm. into using it without, you know, drinking it from the get go. And I think it's, it's, one, it's one thing you can see the results for um, right away. Whereas, um, you know, drinking it, it, it may take a little longer before you see results, but it'll yeah. fix dry skin, you know, right away as soon as you put it on. Definitely. Now, um, how many are, how many of you guys are essential oil fans? Right. So what do you do when you, pull, when you unscrew the top and you bring it up the nose, you get the essence, you get, the, you get the, uh, the, the oils, little teeny <laughs> particulates of oil. Isn't it the same thing with this? I mean, I do this in the car sometimes. I'm sitting, I've got two of these in my car and they're aging. And so every now and then I just unscrew it and just take in the whiff, take in the aroma of it. And I can tell it's still affecting me. Mm -hmm. So that's still <laughs> part of the introduction to the newbies. Well, I, I, I remember hearing that uh, smell is like 80% of your taste or something. I, I don't know how true that statistic is, but I really feel that you taste it when you sm smell certain things, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, there's a lot of information in that smell. You know, and for people who are very energetically sensitive, you can get a lot of information from the different smells. And, and that's why, you know, animals, you know, are primarily use their smell for, you know, sniffing out, you know, enemies versus friends and good food versus bad food. And it's all from smell. Um, and, you know, we have to get back to trusting our smell again. Um, our food has been so modified and, you know, changed that, you know, we can't trust the smell anymore from, you know, processed foods. So we've kind of lost that trust in what, you know, smells right to us. And so bringing it back um, to our own waters, you know, we can smell it and say, you know, are we healthy? We can get all that information from just smelling our own waters or what we need. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Now, we've been doing these conference calls for the last two years. This is number 33 for you guys that are in Gematria. This is number 33. There's a great uh, change in the, in the planets right now. I think this is a perfect time to be having this. Um, I hadn't thrown one of these together in probably a month, so I felt like we got to pull some strong uh, speakers together. And you guys showed up. Thank you very much. Um, the question is, what does having or participating in these World Urine Therapy live Zoom calls mean for the movement and for humanity? How about a deep question? How do you think this is impacting um, the people who watch this when it's been uploaded and recorded and those that have been sharing it and, and going through it? Anybody? Katie? Well, I guess that's why I want to do the Golden Stream is because it, it creates camaraderie. It creates this positive reinforcement that we have with other people who are doing the same thing and maybe they're doing things a little bit different. And so then that keeps us open to continuing with this practice and learning new ways and, and more ways to do it. And um, so the more, I mean, that's why the world does what it does with uh, commercials and programming is to program us. And so what we're doing is deprogramming ourselves in association with each other to be able to encourage the, the healthy habits that we're that we're all creating and that we're all then in this journey of this self-love to be able to um, express that and be able to actually give credit to where, where it comes from, how we are able to be as conscious as we are. So it's, I find that drinking, drinking the urine has raised my own personal consciousness. Um, the reason I got started was because of the self-love and I actually thought I would test myself out and see how much I'd love myself by doing this. And right away, um, I, I felt this spiritual connection and I actually was able to, it felt like I was able to hear from my higher self and, and just get my intuition back and get my um, self knowing back of what I need to do and what I should do. And, 
and why perhaps I'm not doing all that I could be doing so that I can then work on myself, remove the blockages that are happening for me and with no judgment. And um, I think that the more that we get together and do that, that it is helpful to people. It be, makes it normal rather than something that's considered all those other things I don't even want to mention. So yeah, I think that's the normal seedness of it is good, is good so that we don't have such a stigma to it. And then we can see what it benefits each other. So for me, it's not only the self-love, but for me, I've watched my nervous system heal. And being an iridologist, I'm watching that in my eyes. I'm watching it in other areas of my life that I've had difficulty. So this helps me as a practitioner to be able to encourage someone with validation of what it can do for them. And so when we have a group, we have a whole bigger repertoire of, we have seen this work for this, for this person or for that, for the other person, just like what you said earlier, to have that to draw on so that we can then encourage people and help them to create, utilize our own medicine within that smart medicine so that we're not having to be so connected to the things that we think the world has to offer. Thank you. Have you noticed that the people who are coming into your field or coming into your life that are part of this beautiful, precious water family are more happy, joyful, <laughs> vibrant, and have a have an have a desire to connect with you. Have you have you noticed that? Have you noticed that um, more people want to come to these calls, or more people want to be part of this community because you immediately feel a oneness and a connection to people. All the people I met in the water family, God, I'm in love with all of you guys. Uh, it just, I guess it's part of the reason we keep coming back. There's a, there's a, there's a camaraderie that takes place in the water family. You know, for me, like I see, um, wonderful reflections of, of you all, you know, for me, like as somebody who has reclaimed their divinity, you know, like I, I don't see, it's been it's been a wonderful tool for alchemy for me like urine therapy so like when i meet i see you all it's just a wonderful reminder of what we're what we're all about the community and whatnot. has anybody and i've i've been i'm in an interesting position being on the the world stage <clears throat> somehow i got put on that stage um to be able to go somewhere and meet somebody who you met online and all of a sudden you see them in person um yeah, that was cool. It's surreal, but uh, it's a heck of a wonderful way to connect. Like when I, <laughs> when I met uh, Chitta and, and Katie in person and Jose in person, I'm uh, going, you guys are even better. And <laughs> I was like, the virtual version can never capture the spirit and the love of you guys. And, and, and Darlene, I, I can't wait to meet you, but let's do something. Yeah, I know we haven't met in person yet, but one of these days we will. I've been contacted by people all over the world since we've started these conference calls. And um, it's just been amazing people reaching out and, and wanting to know more and um, from people from all over the world. So, you know, this is when online presence is for the good so that we can really connect. So these communities can connect together. It's been, you know, amazing because I'm, you know, fairly remote here in, in Canada. Canada and but being able to connect with everybody all over the world it's it's you know it's changed my life and I'm I know it's changed others and I I hear from people all the time um who want to know more so yeah. I'm thankful for these groups and other groups that are forming I, nice. I have a I have a quick testimony brother sage um the directory somebody reached out to me they saw me on the directory and uh, called me it was a, an older lady and she was just asking about urine therapy and my experience and she was telling me she was suffering from some t type of illness or whatnot and I, it, it, I don't know she's she hung up like saying that she was encouraged and, and whatnot so I think these platforms build give the world you know a, a, a view of, of this you know it gives them a, a chance to reach out to people and whatnot so I love this community well good well we're going to keep doing more of this either through the world conference call um, uh, the other thing, I don't know if you know, Darlene had noticed this, 
and Katie. <clears throat> Get ready, friend. Get ready, sister. Because uh, everybody who has, uh, I've noticed if we've crossed paths, their career took off. They started getting more clients. They started getting uh, more business. They started getting more practice. And so um, there's something that's going to happen. There's some kind of be dynamic change in your career and in your life path uh, from aligning with these, uh, these, uh, these experts and these out outspoken advocates. Yeah, we had talked about that a couple of years ago, Brother Sage, um, that, you know, I was looking for just that little bit more abundance, you know, and boom, it just like went, you know, exploded. I'm as busy as I want to be. <laughs> yes. You know. And some, some of you, like Katie, uh, we've been talking about a book is uh, in the works. <clears throat> and you guys might be uh, putting together mm -hmm. a book anytime. Yes? So, no? I'm so yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll do i'm gonna do the book too like i'm still finishing up my thesis i'm just doing the last little bits on my thesis on the phd so katie i don't know if you know i was doing a, a, a phd on um urine therapy um so nice. I'm kind of finishing up the end of that and then you know the thesis is kind of boring and and technical so i'll need to make a book after that of the, the findings that i found um to go with that um because you know um, medical references are sort of boring so it needs mm -hmm. and that way I can put more of you know my experience into a book of it because it's been two and a half years in the making mm -hmm. um, and um, a lot has happened in that time it's been amazing <laughs> nice well I would enjoy interviewing you with the golden stream and we could could expand on that you know, could actually then start to create your um, manuscript. The people who are interested in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I got a lot here. Yeah, no, I I love that anytime. When you get the book published, and when you get that book launched, this is something my wife had told me years ago. All of a sudden, you're an expert. All of a sudden, people want to know this stuff, and you're in a whole nother category or you're in a whole nother position of being uh, an accredited author of a book. So um, I highly recommend you get those words down you get the manuscript going, however you're gonna up it and publish it, get going. Um, the other piece with the newbies, which I was gonna mention, I just dawned on me is when you're telling them, you know, the baby steps and you're telling them what's in a book and you're showing them testimonials and doing all this stuff, it's great for evidence-based teaching and it's great for you know the intellectual thing but underneath it all they want to know more that you know stuff they want to know that you care because people are hurting people are desperate people are seeking alternatives to the lying medical community and boom here comes urine therapy into their life and they want something to be able substantial uh, for them to bite into it or drink take a drink of it and the fact that you have empathy and, and sensitivity to them is going to go a long way that they see that you care about them. Yeah. So, something on a technical level about caring is that urine has hormones that make you feel amazing. Um, oftentimes we choose food based off of the hormones it gives us anyway, um, mm. as opposed to the caloric content, if you ask me. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it uh, makes you feel really good. You know, it cures all this stuff. Yeah, but like immediately makes you feel better. So treat yourself. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. This is this is a water. Uh, when when I have you guys all heard about the um, the Shivamba wisdoms? Have you seen the chart? Well, I'll just go through them really quick. The Shivamba wisdoms are really simple stuff. And for the new guys who just come to this video, number one, Shivamba is an intuitive medicine. That means your intuition is going to guide you. There's an intelligence that comes with the water. And so all you have to do is trust that. You can keep calling Darlene and Katie and Chitta and myself, but ultimately it's going to come back to the, that individual to learn how to listen to their intuition and follow the guidance. Number two, Shivambu alchemizes anything it touches. It will sterilize, it will neutralize, it will raise the vibration. An example being that when people gargle it and they say, okay, now I gargle it and I took care of you know, whatever funky bacteria is in my mouth, should I spit it out? I said, are you listening to what you just said? You've just neutralized it, <laughs> sterilized it, raised the vibration, swallow the darn thing. Number three, Shivamba works regardless of your considerations. It doesn't matter if you're using a man's, a woman's, an adult, a child, 
someone from another race, someone from an, uh, another species, it could be an animals, it could be whatever, it works. It's a universal panacea. And we've had lots of testimonials of mothers who are feeding it to their daughters and sons and getting results. Uh, pet, pet owners mm -hmm. who are giving it to their mm -hmm. dogs and their cats and their ferrets and their birds. And yeah, we got Katie's dog who won't get out of the, the urine bath so she can use the bathtub. <laughs> It's usually after. I don't let her in before. <laughs> usually after. Uh, number three. Usually after. Yeah. Where are we at? Number four. Evolving urine is the term I, I use instead of aging urine because a lot of people associate the term aging with you're getting sick, you're getting old, you're using power, you're dying. So play with the words in this community. There's no dogma in how we use our water. But if you can, if you can, um, frame it in a way that people will hear it in their mind and in their words and their languaging, it will come across a lot easier for you. Uh, saturation dosing is a term I came out with and more and more people are doing saturation dosing. That's basically increasing your use of the orin, uh in addition to just the oral consumption, but more topicals, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, the bum, the belly button, the fasting. And so when you start doing that, you're getting ahead of pollution in the body. You're preventing any uh, attack or any kind of uh, compromise to your body. And you're doing yourself a whole lot of good by doing more of that. And last but not least, Shivambu is in a category all to itself, kind of like the enzymes from Zen Cleanse. It's in a category to itself. So you're trying to explain this infinite state and you want to narrow it down so people go, oh, that makes total sense to me. Well, every time you use it, every time you deepen your relationship with this water, you get insights and you get understandings that broaden what you knew before. Mm -hmm. The further you go down the rabbit hole, you realize it doesn't end. It just keeps going and going. Anybody have yeah. any comments? But what were you talking about or what I just said? So, how do you feel about the movement worldwide? We're getting more reports from people that are in large quantities. Uh, there is two people in Thailand that are interested in me coming to Thailand. Uh, they want to put together a retreat center. They kind of got the making of it. So, we're going to be doing urine therapy along with fasting, along with diet. Chit is going to love this. He's also going to be uh, the use of Amanita muscaria. That will also be in the mix. Really? You guys, you guys know Eric Storch? That's awesome. Yes. And, and uh, we also discovered that Monica Shute is in Thailand right now. So it'd be Ooh. nice for the, all of us to intersect out there. Yeah, you know what? Amanita can work really well with a, a retreat because it's best taken in the evening before bed and they sleep really deep. And then it works really well with the urine. So it can incorporate with the urine therapy retreat. And it doesn't blast you off absolutely doesn't it is very grounding in even pretty moderate doses it is still very present um <clears throat> would you say that there is a percentage and eric has noticed this when he's doing uh oran fasting all day and doing amanita he's doing uh, three grams a day that's his micro dose and he says he swears that the the essence or the uh, the benefits of the Amanita is showing up in his urine. Oh, a hundred percent. So you get to recycle the best of everything. It's it gets even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that I, that's like old wisdom too. I think that's like the way that the uh, Amanita shamans gave it to people. I think they peed in a cup and gave it to people. That's exactly <laughs> right. Because they would take ridiculously high doses that people couldn't couldn't handle, and then it would be like really uh, <laughs> concentrated. Um, I, I heard this, plus it also just makes so much sense. <laughs> yes. And and, sure. In one of the books I have about Amanita, supposedly in Northern Europe, um, the poor people would buy urine from the wealthier people because they would assume that it has the ibotenic acid. That's the active part mm -hmm. from Amanita. Mm -hmm. the, the, the wealthier people just all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't do that with the blue with the blue mushrooms. Really, you can't, you know? It's like a food, you know, Amanita. Uh, yeah, I harvested a bunch and dried a bunch. I have a 
sealed with desiccant, but I haven't really used it very much. Well, Eric was real excited about it, and he says, well, maybe we should bottle it. <laughs> We're going to start. Sanders Enclans P2. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. That stuff, literally the most, like, shining, sparkling orange I've ever passed was the Zen cleanse. Big statement. Mm -hmm. Well, when I first got my wow about um, drinking the orin of, of myself or somebody that had certain plant medicine uh, essence in it was when I was at the uh, Oceanside Retreat in California back in May. And Abalu, our brother from Jamaica, he gifts me with a whole gallon of his evolving orin. And I'm, to, I'm, I'm knocking it back and doing foot soaks. I'm going, how much TAC do you, THC do you take every day? Because he's always rolling a split and, and, and smoking. I'm going, I swear. And and now he's he 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 wants the micro macro dose on psilocybin mushrooms. I'm going between that and the THC. How do you touch the ground? How do you <laughs> <laughs> so you got to keep all that in balance and perspective? Yeah, I have um I have experience drinking my own after doing ayahuasca and that and um you know, if you talk about plant medicines and the healing benefit and floating <laughs> off into the universe. And, you know, the first book that I did write was on integration. And, um, you know, so it was, you know, an ayahuasca centric integration, but integration can happen at any time. And it can happen by just not even with the plant medicines and stuff like that, you know, because it is, you know, the, on its own, the waters are your own plant medicine. Um, so you can have a large shift and integration is required whenever you have this large um, shift of... <laughs> So um, if anybody feels like, you know, they just don't fit anymore, you know, you need to, you need to do some integration work <laughs> because it's a, it's a big leap we can take mm -hmm. drinking mm -hmm. our own waters um, with or without the help of other medicines. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true and um, I, I, was, I was looping at a at a boga retreat and um i was awake for two two nights in a row oh wow and were you doing some uh, a lot of inner inner work and and retrospection on your life while you're doing, going through that or are you just like buzzing out and couldn't get there no you're it's it's you're not really out there it's it's pretty grounding plant medicine you're pretty much just there like watching yourself think the whole time That's... yeah i mean you know you definitely take more of the compound when you loop your urine back but it's so uh it's a different form of the compound you know right so it's easier on the mm -hmm. system plus it integration yeah it helps to integrate it so much so even if you're having a rough time and you don't want to take more necessarily i definitely recommend taking some of it back in the urine and it'll calm down the situation, which is again, a little bit counterintuitive because mm -hmm. you are taking more of it back in, but it, it, it it's helpful. Yeah. Thank Makes you. Sense. Thank yeah. You. Uh, would you say that <clears throat> since you guys have been doing practicing UT that uh, you felt a liberation from food slavery? Mm. <laughs> So it doesn't run you, you're not a slave to it, you're not obsessed, neurotic, anxious about eating or missing a meal. Would you say that uh, you feel pretty nourished by the orin and eating lighter, more vibrant enzyme active food? You've moved more toward raw foods. Uh, are you still trying to uh, navigate through the food uh, journey? I think uh, for me, I started urine therapy when I started getting into juice fasting and then with that, um, it just started to make sense to go raw, raw vegan. So now I've been, you know, only eating raw, raw vegan for a little over two years now, but, um, I can taste if I've had too many onions or if I had too many chilies or something, you know, my, my urine tells me, you know, that, and, um, I just kind of base my diet off that, you know, if I need more fruit or whatever, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely complimentary. Have you, uh taken the time to test whether you were truly hungry during the day. Uh, the reason <laughs> the reason I said that, when, I, when I do an orange fast, somewhere around five or six in the afternoon, I realized I didn't eat, I didn't crave food, and I got a lot done. So your relationship with food is going to change. Mm -hmm. 
not that you're going to move toward breatharianism or fruitarianism, but uh, it's not going to it's not going to run you like it used to. No, and, and you, the more fruit that you have too, the the sweeter it tastes, you know, so then you're more apt to eat more fruit. And, and, you know, so even if you're not totally fruitarian or, or vegan, you know what I mean? The more, the more you head in that direction, the more you're wanting to go in that direction. Yeah. Turned into a big fan of maple syrup. Mm. <laughs> yes. I've seen you uh, tip it back a few times. <laughs> yeah right what does it look like i'm literally walking down the street sometimes with something like this just training it it's <laughs> like a bottle of whiskey yeah, yeah. yeah. It's brown um yeah un un uh, unacceptable uh fantastic for your liver uh yeah and then the urine tells me it's fantastic you know um this notion that sugar oh, that yeah that sugar just across the board is bad for you is clearly incorrect mm -hmm. Yeah, getting to know the right kind of sugar. Yeah. Absolutely. Take a breath. So we passed the hour mark. Uh, we can keep on going or we can do a group hug and, and go play. Uh, what would you guys feel like doing? Might be enough for today unless anybody has anything they want to add. Um, I will remind you of a couple of things that is happening. Um, oh, another pretty kitty. Hi, kitty. Uh, several of the projects that I'm working on, one is a, a retreat in Arkansas with the Golden. <clears throat> and um, so that's, you're going to hear more and more about that as it, it gets formulated. We've got the, we've got the, we've got the venue, we've got the dates, we've got the cost. So if anybody wants to jump the gun and save some money, uh, you can reach out to myself or Katie. Uh, the Water Family Directory is still up and running. If anybody has not been listed and you want to be listed and you're ready to be uh, known and reached out to worldwide, that will start happening to you. Uh, the Shivambu Hut, uh, we're up to about 300, and, excuse me, 820 members. Um, I'm still doing urine therapy trainings and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I need another retreat, Katie. Let's do a retreat. <laughs> <laughs> for those the, for those who've been to some of our retreats, uh, you'll find that it's a lifestyle worth building into your life. Is living on retreat state of mind, Katie? Go ahead. <laughs> well, I guess I was kind of contemplating on adding this, and so I decided that I would. So, um, being an iridologist, and I the last retreat we went to, and you know, looking at the eyes and such. Um, has been enjoyable and I'm looking forward to like looking at people's eyes who are doing urine therapy because I'm, I wonder um, what I'll see. I would really love to be able to work with people that have not started it yet. And then as they get started with it, what changes do I see? Um, which is what I do with myself. But I guess I would, I would say with that, that um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing something regarding sugar that um, I, I'm leaning towards the spot of, I see a lot of fungal things in people's eyes. And so then I, I do go, well, maybe we can get too much sugar because maybe we're feeding something. So I, a lot of that is still in my um, learning because it's like, what, what is, the effects that I will see on the eyes and what is all that. So I'm taking all this information in and not wanting to create any judgments anywhere too quickly, but just um, taking it in and looking at it and, and questioning, question everything, because that's a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, I'd love to just pipe up and say, I think a really common sugar issue in people is fermenting carbohydrates, fermenting starches in particular mm -hmm. in the gut, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, right. Yeah, I mean, it gets hot and people start acting angry. Well, that's because mm -hmm. the starches are turning into alcohol in the gut. <laughs> right, right. And and yes. the sugars of simple carbs over complex carbs, I think those, you know, people try to get rid of all carbs or they, you know, don't know the difference. And um, those sugars, I find, cause a lot of fungal and yeast problems in people. And um, yeah, is that what you found too, Katie? Um, actually, I've... <laughs> 
I'm not really sure how much freedom I have to speak, but I'm seeing people who are actually fruitarians mm -hmm. with some huge fungal issues, which mm -hmm. I go, hmm, are we dealing with emotions? Is it because of perhaps right. anger that goes along with the sugar? Or is it that a pancreas is not fully breaking it down? So then I'm, I'm take, like I said, I'm taking in more information. And so I'm looking at more things in the body when I see that is, is where is the pancreas? Because the pancreas is working with that. Um, where is the liver? And how are these other things working with that? So yeah, it makes me take a deep breath and say, yeah, sometimes you just want to take it in and think and move yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, those are interesting More findings. Mm -hmm. Those are very interesting findings because I don't get fruitarians here because it's so cold and um, <laughs> it's hard to get good quality fruit here um, year round. Um, so there's nobody that's fruitarian around here. So I'm not getting the same issues um, that you would get in a more Southern place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's fun about the retreat. So I, I'm yeah. enjoying, you know, being able to um, get pictures of people's eyes and, and uh, share what I know. And I have a feeling that as time goes on, I'll even know more because that's how you, that's how you get there. That's how you get to that spot. I actually question, um, like, the, I think the emotions are huge. I think they're mm -hmm. much bigger and that they can affect a lot of things more so than what we like to give attention to. I can tell with my urine um, if I have had a bad day and it's really rare when I have a bad day. So that way I can tell I could, oh, it tastes great all the time, you know, no problem. And then all of a sudden you have a day where your catalytic converter gets cut off your car and you're like, oh my yeah. God, it's terrible. <laughs> right after you get back from the retreat, man. Oh, what a deal. <laughs> right. So then you, you know, it's, it's been enjoyable for me to kind of just be able to check in with my heart, my emotions, where am I? Where's my brain? Mm -hmm. Where's my heart? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you guys. Um, I'm, I'm breathing, but I have to bring up something else. The mucoid plaque, man, you know, oh, like what's going there. What's going there? <laughs> so, yes. you know, yes. what, when, when we allow our body to detox by eating high vibrational and pranic and fruit and you know whatever is not dense in my understanding, um, we're gonna express more symptoms. And mm -hmm. possibly that could even include more of our body creating things that are trying to break down the toxins, which are the, and I'm sure you've already thought of this, uh, which would be bacterial stuff, like bacteria is mm -hmm. trying to help. So yeah, mm -hmm. you, could, you could eat stuff that stops your detox process and that might bring down the bacteria because you're stopping the detox process. Again, this is not something I'm dogmatic about, but this would be the explanation um, that I think a lot of people would go with. Um, and then like, you know, okay, so we got to stop this perpetual detox process. How do you do that? I think step one is get rid of this cement block of mucus that's in our 20 something feet of intestines. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that um let's blame that first is my my uh uh desire <laughs> well thank, yes. thank you i was right there when you when you brought it up um yeah i don't know but i definitely know i want to blame that first all right i've said my piece <laughs> thank you well what i've been noticing i've been i've done th uh three intestinal cleanses from zen so many people are following me with the zen clean uh, journey i've done two liver cleanses and uh, things started clearing up. Dots started being connected. And uh, I started realizing that, oh, yeah, fruitarianism is awesome. I'm in indulging in fruitarianism for the past three years. But I found out that nobody that I've met was born and raised a fruitarian. Nobody's been a fruitarian their entire life. And mm. when they got into their adult stage of being a fruitarian, they didn't think to clean the pipes. They didn't yeah. think to clean out the small intestines. Well, here comes Zen cleanse, and I'm pooping out this rubbery hose. I'm getting fatty material, toxic material, and my brain's clearing up, and the energy's coming back, and I'm putting on weight. And yeah, you can be a fruitarian, but it's nice to have a, a clean uh, uh, base um, to get all those nutrients absorbed. Yeah. Right. That's what I was thinking was that perhaps, you know, like what I'm seeing is, is a situation where that was created a long time ago. Yeah. And, and um, then where, where a person might be now, um, 
how it how it inter, interplays with it. So we have to remember, like I remember that, you know, what I'm looking at is is a whole lifetime of stuff. And that, yeah, cleansing, doing Zen cleanse, doing, you know, whatever it is that you can cleanse and just time to be able to, to continue on the journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 15 years ago, I did a water fast. I didn't know about the urine at the time. So I did a water fast and, um, you know, a raw food fast and then a water fast. And um, mm-hmm. I got this giant mucoid plaque out of me. Um, mm-hmm it's some herbal tinctures along with it and a lot of enemas um that I was you know quite surprised but happy that it you know that's what I was you know going for and and surprised when I actually saw it because I had been doing enemas daily and nothing coming out and on a water (laughs) fast and then all of a sudden this giant you know mucus comes out yeah (laughs) the snake in the corner for two years before I got any of this yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) right and well I know I know for me, for with colon hydrotherapy, it'll take a while for me to be able to release something. I will just um, continue to just basically get, get clear, and then eventually, you know, you start to get something. And then for me, with colon hydrotherapy, I need to just stick with it um, for another thirty minutes, and then all of a sudden, you're like, "Oh, there we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the floodgates have opened up finally." But it take it takes time. And, and the, the colon is the biggest organ of elimination and it's, it just can't be underestimated how it has the effect on every other cell and your interstitial fluids throughout your body. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. very important. I haven't done this, but I heard it's awesome to go to the colon hydrotherapist the day after you do your Zen cleanse. Did you tell this Sage? But like, it really gets a whole lot more. Um, I've never done a whole colon hydrotherapy. I've just done a ton of Emma. I, and it's a, di- it's a different beast. I, w- I did the colon colon hydrotherapy with a giant um, bottle of fresh and aged. Um, and so after I did the initial cleanses, I got him to put the um, the aged and, and fresh through. And that was a, that was a buzz. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, no, there's definitely other ways to get some mucoid plaque out. Um, yeah. But certainly I think Zen cleanse is the fastest, the gentlest and the most profound. Um, but yeah, you know, duck flower too. Uh, that's a real purgative. I've been messing with that in pill form. If you take the whole thing, you like might end up in the hospital, <laughs> but these pills, uh, that's been really purging stuff for me. So yeah, you know, um, I think I talk about Zen cleanse, not out of a, uh, a fear or a, this is the only way mentality, but it, it's just, it's just amazing and uh, gentle. And for people who are really in a tough spot, uh, boy, go with that versus, you know, torturing yourself for very little results. Um, That's my piece on that. Yeah. Yes. And so have you guys discovered that the mucoid plaque is just not a mythical character like Bigfoot? (laughs) (laughs) That's quite just real. It <laughs> it's very real. <laughs> you're going, you're going real. Yeah, yeah, you're up in the middle, of, out in the woods in Canada. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you see him walking through the woods all the time. <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm in the middle of my cleanse today, so I'm. Yeah. What? It's about, it's about time for me to take some more stuff. <laughs> oh, congratulations! Yeah. Okay, oh, wow. massage yeah. the intestines you massage therapist that makes a, oh yeah double the results you gotta Literally. do a yeah. jelly massage then i don't have my colon hydrotherapy table hooked up in my house yet but i am going to get it hooked up in my house but i um when it comes to an enema you know you can just keep putting more in your enema bag and it's almost like you know colon hydrotherapy oh, okay <laughs> All like right. you it's know like several really gallons into there Never that's done it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, let's save some money. That's, that's kind of where I'm at with that right now. So yeah. yeah. Hey, is it cleanse day? <laughs> we, all, we also have Ellen Brown, who's just got her box of the Zen number one. She's about to get going if she hadn't already. Um, so I'm going to help guide her through it because she's not quite understanding the uh, the manual and the instructions. The, the massage yeah. way is you got a fist and the other hand goes on top of the fist and then you push that fist into the abdomen in small circles in the uh, four Clock, corners. Clockwise. Right here. One. And then, you know, another corner up here under the rib. And the liver. And over here. Spleen. And down here. Yeah. Same. And this is because the poop gets stuck in the joints. 
of the intestines and those yeah. uh, and those bends and curves that are out there yeah. on the quarters. So, so I do in colon hydrotherapy right there at the ileocecal valve, which is right here at the right lower corner. You can uh, kind of give it one of those or the, uh, yeah, the upper corner, I'm sorry. You can give it one of, give it, I'd like to do the fingers just a little bit, like get the fingers in there and just kind of like a circle or a little back and forth with that. It, on the Zenclan support group, they have, uh, which everybody should get a link to when they get their product, the, the support group on Telegram. If you type in iliosacral release, there's a massage mm -hmm. therapist video where she does a manipulation Please. like you're talking about and then a rotation yeah. of the right leg. Yeah. 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 Mm. I do that for people, even if they're not doing the cleanse, because um, sometimes that valve can get stuck open um, and they can have a lot of pain because then um, stuff is coming back from the large intestine back into the small intestine, um, which mm -hmm. is very painful. Yeah. Where yeah. on my stomach would I do like a, like right in here? Everything's backwards on this thing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, but this is my right. Do it's lower. Time. It's lower, like closer to your hip bone. Yeah, my right yeah. side. Yeah, we yes. use yeah. 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 the right side. Yeah. On the right, closer to the hip bone, right in there in that section. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then the small and large intestine. Yeah, of course they're hooking up. Right. Yeah. Oh, finally. That's the hookup. Finally, that's the hookup part. So you've got your ascending, transverse, descending, and then it, you know. <laughs> and chances right. are most people's transverse is doing this it's it's curving down it's so curving down. yeah be be cognizant of that that it might be might be going down like the the transverse which is up top under the diaphragm right. yeah it's probably Linking. not straight across it's probably got a little droop to it so so you might want to work that you can even work it like towards work it up and ar around the body yeah. i'll literally push it back into place there huh yeah, you can get a, give it a nudge. Yeah, no, I've heard of that before. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of chiropractors who can push your organs back into place. I've heard about if, that. Yeah, yeah, if they've been chronically constipated, then there's a stretch that it, it tends to be stretched out and not, you know, elastic anymore. And that that Bible that that um, Sage had, the Pink Book on natural healing. Mm -hmm. I saw pictures of a large enlarged stomach and how it just gets bigger and bigger and more stretched out. And I'll never forget that mm -hmm. image. <laughs> Yes. And you can see that on the guts of people that walk down the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How descended their colon is, how inflamed it is. Mm -hmm. Massaging your stomach is so underrated. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just in general. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh. oh my gosh, I don't do it enough. I need I need this group support. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Well so emotional, you know. Just like pushing on your stomach. Oh my gosh. And anyone that's had a hernia, like I have. A hernia so then there's um possibility of scar tissue and so as when you do that you can push your fingers in at these locations and if if you go in easily that's nice and then you can also like maybe feel some scar tissue and then you're going to want to take your fingers and just gently like back and forth across the fibers cross fiber at those areas gently and then like i would do it small like and then you can open it up bigger and, and get more relief through those which can cause constipation and other issues for people which i figure is why i have my experience on the colon hydrotherapy table because of the things that i've had happen in my abdomen so <laughs> i've had my whole colon taken out and my organs and rinsed and put back in so it, it was an interesting deal. <laughs> so, yeah. Some serious issues in the lot. intestinal region of my family. Yep, mm -hmm. not myself, but yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, these issues are real. <laughs> what you're, what you're yeah. talking about, I, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, DMSO is good for scar tissue. Um, heard that. Cool. What one is that? What is that? Oh, DMSO. 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 The dimethyltryptophan earth is what you're talking about, or no dimethyl sulfoxide, okay. uh, the okay. stuff that also comes from trees along with turpentine. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Dimethyl right. sulfoxide. Mm -hmm. Amanda Vollmer talks about it a lot, and you can mm -hmm. actually do it orally. Pretty strong. It's a solvent, um, mm -hmm. and it's full of sulfur, and um, it kind of gives plants its their strength. It's in food, um, mm -hmm. and it, it's a chelator. 
and a strengthener and it can dissolve scar tissue. Like I saw a video of somebody who got, mm -hmm. got cut by a knife on their arm and, and there was a big lump of scar tissue and it just was gone after like months of massaging it in there. Um, so I'm starting to take DMSO, a dropper full or orally and it's loosening me up in general, um, along with are you, turpentine. Are you mixing it with anything or chasing it with anything? Uh, yeah, pee. <laughs> That's the appropriate answer for this call. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've heard of uh, homeopathic remedies that can help break down scar tissue. So for me, I don't really, I have a reluctance to take that much sulfur because I have a lot of sulfur buildup in, in my body because of um, things that they gave me when I was a little girl. Pharmaceuticals, right, right. Up, totally, you know? there's like a toxic, like I hear about yeah. this too, and that's exactly what I'm wondering about DMSO because it seems yeah. to be a miracle. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and you know, way better than MSM and MSM's got a different, decent reputation and that's sulfur based as well. So yeah. it's like, is, is it a matter of like inorganic versus organic or some kind of a available right. versus not, or am I just wrong? Um, I don't know. Yeah, just more to, to learn. We yeah. can learn about that. Yeah, Volmer's Sarah all Peptase. over it. I, I usually appreciate her. I like to recommend serapeptase for people. Um, I'll write it at how it's spelled in the chat there. Um, and that breaks down scar tissue and inorganic matter inside the body. Um, so, you know, hardened cysts, hardened, you know, lumps and bumps, um, calcifications, um, those kind of things. You know, you, of course, you got to make sure your acid levels are in the right, that you're not producing more, but um, in the right stream. But uh, serapeptase is um, great for breaking that stuff down in the body. Yeah, enzymes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah enzymes. enzymes. Oh, and uh, in terms of breaking things apart, if anybody's worried about uh, blood blood clots uh, nowadays the best uh, blood clot uh, preventer is urokinase which is in your water yes it is All right oh. by mm -hmm. far among thousands of other great stuff mm. and so topically that, i think castor oil <clears throat> castor oil has been good topically to help break down scar tissue too so yeah that's probably an old time remedy but <laughs> yeah, castor oil is great but i find castor oil works better for blood type o people than it does for blood type a people um ah, i'm an o <laughs> so it works good for you where i'm an a and it doesn't work as well for me oh. um, okay that's cool i didn't, didn't know that that's valuable thank you yeah, yeah. well guys we're, nice we're coming to the end of the call yay we can do this all day but there's life outside <laughs> There's life outside mm -hmm. of this room, so I'm going to go out there. Um, let's do a group <laughs> hug. Group hug. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Much love. If you guys, uh, you all know how to reach me. If we're working on a project or if you got something you want to discuss, uh, just reach out and uh, we'll we'll go for it. Jose, Excellent. great, great awesome. to see you. Jose. You. you too. Great to see everybody. Take care. Take right. care. Blessings, bye -bye. everyone.